Okay, Stella, so you're gonna go in here, and it's gonna be a little weird because he kind of smells, but you're gonna get really good food every day, and you get to see this awesome buck house that we've been working on for like forever. It's gonna be amazing. Tell her, Fern. <laughs> Stella was the result of a love-struck Luna and a goofy little buck named Floki. And while we weren't really planning on keeping a mixed goat like Stella, well, we just fell in love with her. Because Stella is half Nubian, half Nigerian, and we're breeding her with a full Nigerian, that means the babies will only be a fourth Nubian. So there'll be these little odd mixes, but we plan on selling them as pets or as good family milkers, just not registered ones with proof of amazing genetics or anything. Okay, Fern, come All on. All right, Fern, come on, Fern, you're done. She's like, oh, oh, finally. All right. Go on, ready? Stella. <laughs> She's willing. <laughs> She's ready to be in this new place. She cares about the food. There's nothing in there yet. Well, so far, it's been very romantic. Stella's eating, and Iverson's afraid of her. Now he's coming over. All food is his love language, <laughs> just like Kevin. Yes. Luna, do you want to be with the buck too? She does. I actually tried to find a mix of a half Nubian and half Nigerian buck, but I couldn't find one. So we're gonna just go with this purebred one, Iverson. They're about the same size. She's a little wow. bit bigger. He's got the super long legs. Yeah, he is a taller buck. So we're not gonna breed Stella for genetics. Instead, we're gonna breed her for milk production. I've heard that the Nigerian Nubian mix produces a different flavor of milk. So we're kind of excited to try it and see what it tastes like. We use the goat's milk produced on our farm for ourselves and then we give it away to family and friends and a few of the local rescues around here. So we always like to have enough on hand. And I think Stella is gonna be the perfect little milking goat. Her mom, Luna, was an amazing milker for us for years. And now that Luna's retired, it's kind of fun to see Stella carry on the tradition. Oh, look, he's sniffing her. Good job, Stella. All right. As long as you check her 20 times a day, Iverson. It'll be good. You're okay. Wow, they haven't seen each other in a while. Mother and daughter. They're, they're fighting it out a little bit. Whenever a goat gets reintroduced back, they always go through this kind of herd order. Where everybody has to fight and establish. Luna has to show that she's the queen. So does Doris. And I don't know what Tilly's doing. She's been fighting for a little bit too. She's oh, she's still so such, sweet. Yeah, she's still such a sweetie. Are you glad you're done with that buck in there? I don't know, he was pretty sweet to you. Oh, <gasps> there it is. Hey. He's on the move. It's moving, get, get it. it. Get it, get it, get it. Oh. Welcome to Arizona where each night we go out and we search for scorpions. <laughs> oh, get that one right there. That's it, it's, it's on like textured wall, so be careful. Get it. Oh, get it, get it. Oh. Good job. Yes. You cut its finger Dead. Off. Scorpions are a huge problem in Arizona, so everybody goes out at least once a week with their black light and tries to kill as many as possible. They have a really painful sting and they can be really deadly to children, so we take the most precautions here. Can I get oh, no, two? No, that's a challenge. Oh, man. Here's my challenge. There's one on the side of okay, the Okay, so if I do two shoes... No, 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 no. Don't try that, because you're going to be barefoot there. Don't try that. Two oh, shoes. Cool. It's the only way. No. Two shoes. Oh my gosh. Ready? Oh my gosh. Nice. Well, did you get that one or did I don't know if I got that one. I have gone into the wall there. We don't have a lot of pests or predators, but we do have scorpions. Good morning, Doris. <laughs> Good morning, Tilly. Good morning, Fern. 
Good morning. Good morning, Luna. Good morning, Willow. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Good morning, Penny. Look. Good morning, Winston. Good morning, Zorro. Good morning, Tatum. Winnie. Good morning, Winnie. <laughs> Good morning, Stella. Good morning, Iverson. Good morning, chicks. And Kiwi. Good morning, chickens. <laughs> Good morning, Hermione. Bye. A lot of people ask us if Doris misses her babies, but because we keep them until they're 10 weeks old, the mamas are pretty much done with them by then. Even the mamas who have their babies here have started to separate a little bit. Doris has just gone about her day as usual, eating food, showing the other goats who's boss. But one thing about Doris is that she's really good at waiting her turn to get a drink. The new diet plan for Penny, Willow, and Winnie is going great. They seem to enjoy having the food all to themselves. But Willow still loves to come on the stand to get milked. And she's doing a lot better with not kicking. After we're done milking Tilly, everybody munches on their breakfast. And we've been letting Winnie out to play with Tatum, and it's adorable. Meanwhile, in the chicken coop, the hens are all laying lots of eggs, and we're still trying to decide if this truly is a rooster. The meat chicks are loving all this grass, and Hermione loves watching them. And Kiwi's finally starting to remember where the food is. That's our morning. Alright, what do you guys think here? Let's see. So we can see through the cracks going in the shower. Right that here. would be a good spot. Maybe okay. that one. Uh, uh that well. Kevin has been secretly working on a fun Kevin's craft project. An outdoor shower. Made out of PVC. Right, and now we're gonna have a cool shower caddy. <laughs> oh, actually, I think I, it's better at the back. Yeah. yeah, that's way better. I was thinking right there, but if you think we need to go, is that okay if we do it right there? Sure. Okay. So there's just one problem. I bought this shower <laughs> kit and um we forgot to measure i forgot to measure so we had to stick it through the pergola there yeah it works it works it's hot all right. right very cool nice we have it in a little drip pan and then it drains out into the garden the water's nice and warm from the sun yeah oh it's getting cooler. <laughs> it gets cold pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> Feel that, Lydia. Feel how cold that is. Feels good. <laughs> and the best part, we can all fit in here. Yay! <laughs> we got a big one. Not really a craft because we bought a kit. <laughs> it took a lot, yeah. lot of work out in the sun, but still not a craft because it costs money. The crafty part though is the drip pan at the bottom because oh, that wasn't, that we was, were trying to figure out how to not let the water stay was. on the deck all the time. Yes. So that was pretty crafty. That was. <laughs> Well, 
since it's nice and sweaty right now, I thought I would show you guys a little bit of the garden. A lot of what was left over from the winter had to get pulled up and now I just have everything prepped and ready for September with lots of wood chips over everything and a few things in the summer still hanging on. We've got green beans, zucchini, cherry tomatoes, Myokama squash, some more zucchini, and some ambrosia melons mixed in. The sweet potatoes are starting to take off. The corn's doing pretty well. I put a couple drops of mineral oil on the top of each silk, so hopefully that will keep the worms out. We've got plenty of tomatoes we're still trying to eat and can. And my favorite Mexicano melons are doing really good. I have them on these little cradles here which help protect against bugs and, you know, um, moisture on the ground. We've got a lot of things we've been gathering from the garden every day, but guys, this is my favorite. Look at all of these grapes. <laughs> I think we have a lot, like tons. We've got some Thompson and Red Flame and they just keep going and going all the way down the line. Tons of them. Now they're a little bit small right now but they still are super sweet and taste amazing. So we're definitely gonna be giving a ton of these away <laughs> to family and friends. And it only took three years to get them producing. So far things are looking pretty good and now it's time to go inside and make some dinner. My asparagus, unfortunately, is not ready. It's not gonna be ready for a couple years. So just gonna have to use store-bought tonight. So let's go make dinner. <laughs> Okay guys, I saw a really cool idea for asparagus fries. So that's what we're making tonight. To keep the mess low, I decided to do it all in a Ziploc bag. So we'll see how it goes. First you coat the asparagus in just a little bit of flour. Then beat an egg and mix that in as well. Finally, we're gonna coat all of it with some breadcrumbs. And then, like my great grandma Alva taught me, you have to wash out your Ziploc bags, guys, so you can save them for later. I lined the asparagus in the air fryer and cooked it for only about seven minutes. It came out perfectly. I was studying up on how to cook pork roast, and a lot of people say that it's hard to get it to stay tender. So I'm just gonna pan sear it and then roast it in the oven just until it hits the internal 165 degrees. In the end, it turned out actually pretty tender. The asparagus fries were a favorite, so we're definitely gonna make that again. And it was a pretty simple dinner. We just paired it with a little bit of potato salad from last night's dinner and called it good. Stella, are you already tired of the buck? Stella definitely does not want to be in here. She's been loud as heck this whole day. But I know she's going to go into heat in just a few days. So we're going to keep her in here and watch her closely. And hopefully in a few days, she'll love him and want to be by him all the time. Right, Stella? Thanks for watching today's video, guys. You really should watch this video where Luna and Floki fell in love and Stella was created.